So this week I was working on my course platform and I went to the Verstel platform. And what I saw there was such a nice animation that I thought we have to recreate this today. And that animation looked like this. Just take a look at the top navigation here and see what happens if we scroll. If we scroll, you notice that slowly the secondary navigation or it's pretty much the primary navigation moves right next to the logo. And the top bar simply scrolls out of view. And my mind immediately went, oh my God, we can rebuild this with frame motion. We can do this, let's go. And then I thought, there is no need for frame motion here. This is actually a really simple animation. So today I wanna break this down and we're gonna recreate this with just a little bit of CSS and a scroll listener in JavaScript. So let's do it. So as a starting point for us, I already created this basic setup, which is a really simple React app where we have a few Tailwind classes that already makes this basic framework. You see the top main navigation or breadcrumbs, I think, and then the main navigation right underneath that. And this is what we're going to use to animate. If you scroll now, you don't see anything, simply everything moves out of the way. And I'm using React here, but you could build this with plain JavaScript as well. There's no need for any framework here. So let's take this step by step. The first thing we can do is make this menu stay at the top. And we can do that by using some basic CSS. And the CSS we need for that is position sticky. And if we go to this main navigation, you see that I did not put this inside of the header component because the header component is a component that's actually right on top of the navigation component and not, it's not nested inside each other. And the reason for that is because now I can add position sticky as well as a top of zero to this. And what that already does is if we now scroll, the navigation will simply stay at the top. And this is really the power of CSS sticky. So now the next thing what we need to do is make that logo also stay in place. However, if we would make that position sticky as well, it would be sticky until the next element that will be sticky comes into view. So but let's say we're going to add a class name on here, make that sticky and give it a top of zero. You notice that it still scrolls away because inside of its parent, there is no room to be sticky. So that's the reason why this won't be sticky just like the main navigation, because the navigation is nested inside this main div. And we could move it outside of the header. For example, add a Z index that's higher. Yeah, then you see that this kind of works. I mean, we would need to do some positioning, but this could work. But for this specific case, I actually want to make this position fixed within this header. So that way it's kind of still contained within this main navigation. And we could probably even make this a real anchor that goes back to the homepage if you would build this for real. And then it would still be part of the header component where all the other breadcrumbs are. And you could probably add things like metadata on top of it. So instead of position sticky for this one, I would use position fixed and give this for now a top a zero and a left of zero. And then of course, if you scroll, it's gone again because our main navigation is on top of it. So that means that we would need to add another Z index and then you see the logo appear again. And now of course we have positioned this element in the top left corner oh, and we should even add a zero here which is not the right position. And that is because we still need to take into account the padding that the header has. So we're gonna make it top four as well as a left of six. So it's in the original position again, but it also means that this header now has a padding left of 16. So it has some room for the logo to be positioned in. And that is because we're using position fixed. The logo doesn't take up the place in the DOM anymore that it would used to. So everything simply moves to the left and we correct that with the newly added padding. And now if we would then scroll, you see that the logo falls into place right where the main navigation is. And if we take a look at first cells example again, and you scroll, you see that pretty much the only thing that happens now is that the navigation moves to the right and it also seems to move up. However, that's not really the case. It is moving up because you're scrolling. It's actually only moving to the right. And because you're scrolling at the same time, it looks like it's moving diagonally. So what we need to do next is we need to know how far the user has scrolled. And for that, I already went ahead and installed a very small JavaScript package that gives us this value as, as a React hook. But you can, of course, also create your own document event listener to get the same scroll position. However, we are going to go ahead and import use scroll position from React hook window scroll. And this is a package that I already installed. Use that if you want, but there's plenty of others that you can use as well. So this use scroll position we can use in our app, which gives us a Y value. And in there we can use that use scroll position and we pass in the number of 60. 
which is the times per second that this should update the number. And if we use 60 frames per second, we get a really smooth update, so the animation will happen as often as possible. Based on this number, we can then create a translate X that moves the text to the right. Let's take a quick look at that Y value first. We copy that and we go, for example, to our main and we render that. You see that we get a number that updates the Y position if we scroll. What I want to do now is I want to convert this number if you go from 1 to 50, for example, into a specific range. So I want to convert the range 0 to 50 to, for example, let's say a translate of 0 to 24 pixels. So for that, I already went ahead and found a very small function online that converts one range to another. And I already created that into a React hook that makes it a little bit easier for us. So let me quickly add that in here. And then we need to import the use memo. And what it simply does is it takes a number and then you input two ranges, the input minimum, the input maximum, and the output minimum and output maximum. So this range we can then use as a hook down here, or we can, for example, say uh, nav x equals use range, where we input that y number that we got, and then we say range of 0 to 50, which is the y that you will scroll, and that will give us a translate of between 0 and 42, for example. So if we would copy this nav x and also add that in the DOM for a second, you notice that we're currently at 24 pixels down, but the value of that x is now 20, and that is because it maps one range to the other. And this value we can then simply use to create a translate X to move that navigation to the right. So let's see how we could do that. We're going to go to our an or list and add a style tag on here where we're going to add transform and you see copilot already guessing what we want or we're going to add a translate X and then we don't want a negative translation but we want to translate right. And because this number is constantly updating while we scroll you already see that if we start scrolling now that it kind of makes an animation. So let's do it. Look at that. It already moves to the right and it also seems like it's moving to the top and there's nothing else you need to do. Although there's one small thing that the Vercel team also did and that is shrinking the logo down in size as well. For that, we're going to go back up. We create logo scale where we again are going to use the use range and input the Y. We go from 0 to 50 and then we go from 1 to 0 0.8 and then this scale we can go to our SVG and we can add another transform. Come on copilot, thank you very much. And then we're going to add this scale on top of it. So that means if you scroll now you see that the logo also shrinks just a little bit so it fits a bit better in that navigation container. And look at that. It's only a few lines that we had to add and we didn't need any library like frame of motion. I mean, your brain always goes towards the tools that you get excited about most, like most, but CSS, JavaScript, all these basic tools are so powerful and animations like this are a lot easier than you think often. And it's all about breaking them down in these small steps and going from one step into another, making it sticky first, then see if we can get the logo in the right position, moving things to the right, then scaling the logo down. And all of these things combined suddenly result in a really nice looking animation like this. And you could of course go ahead and also add a transition transform on here. But yeah, because it has specific duration, as soon as you stop scrolling, it starts, it is still moving the animation. So that looks pretty ugly. You could make the duration really small, but then if it's only 20 milliseconds, then what's the added value of that animation? So that's why it's actually simply tied into your scrolling position. Because if you scroll in a smooth way, then it will work. If you scroll really quick, then it simply just jumps into place. And I think that's okay as well, because that way it doesn't get in the way of any UI part at all. So despite this being a pretty short video, I think it was a really fun one to see how you can build these things step by step. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I'm gonna go back working on my course right now, really trying to release the first modules still this year. And it's looking quite good. Follow me on Twitter as well, if you want to see more updates and then Please subscribe and leave a like on the video because that helps me a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.